Today's video, we are going to work with foam. We are going to take some foam bodies and we're going to make them look as realistic as we can. And basically, we're going to do some grasshoppers or a grasshopper and a dragonfly to show you. So basically, what I do is I have cutters and I can make these pre made bodies. Like here's some that are frogs, I have some that are shrimp, dragonfly grasshopper bodies basically just pretty much anything i've got crabs i've got all kinds so what we're going to do is i'm going to tilt this camera down and i'm going to show you guys how i go about making them so i've got a little push cutter you can get these from most major fly shops and i just take it and i'll wiggle it around and it gives you this piece of foam you can make them in any shape you know any any pattern you want they probably have a cutter for it so with that that made it makes you the the body style of whatever pattern it is like this one here is a grasshopper now if you don't have those cutters get your scissors and as long as you have your scissors all you got to do is cut the piece out the best that you can and mimic the pattern that you're going to make and all we're going to do is we're going to just kind of round the end of that as such. And, and you don't have to actually have cutters to do that. And it works. It works really well. So what we're going to do, we're going to take one of these. They're a quilter's pin that you can get in the craft store. And they're like two inches long. I like the longer ones. And I like these that have these flat heads because I can break it off real easy. And what I do is I break it off to where it can go into my vise without any kind of anything in the way. Then I use a thick thread. When working with foam, you always want to use a heavier thread, just as if you were spinning deer hair. So with that thicker thread, it doesn't cut through. And what we're going to do is we're just going to build a base over the top. And this particular thread I'm using is 210 denier. So we're going to build a thread base. Now, once you've done this and are doing this, I keep one of these hooks around with the thread base on it all the time to where all I gotta do is whip finish it and I can start fresh with each time that I'm doing it. So all you do is you're gonna take your piece of foam and you're gonna tie it on to this needle. And when you tie a foam, you wanna do it with a loose wrap. Give me a little bit more thread. And then a tight wrap. Then we want to go underneath don't just carry it over because then it gives you jagged line, jagged lines, and, you know, the zigzags. It just looks horrible. So go underneath the foam, go back over, loose, tight. Under the foam, loose, tight. Under the foam, loose, tight. Under the foam, if I can get my thread long enough. Under the foam loose and then tight then get your thread out of the way and then we are going to take a lighter we want to hold this kind of where we want it to look like because it's going to be somewhat permanent when we get done we're going to take our lighter if you get it too close it'll melt the thread you don't want to melt the thread because you're going to take the thread off so you don't want to burn the thread melt the thread anything like that so what we're going to do is we're just going to take this lighter and we're going to go underneath it and you will see that foam kind of starts to swell up a little bit and it looks a little bit hardened so once you get that done, you just stop. Make sure that it's not going to burn you to touch. And then let's unwrap it. Let's pull my thread back up. Now you can see that leaves permanent indentions on that dragonfly body. So a lot of guys tie just kind of like what I'm doing and they leave like a pin or a needle or something like that in the fly. And I just don't think that when they hit, they just don't seem as natural to me. I like that flexible ability to do that. And you can tie that in and it'll look super realistic. You can see how it's got the segments notched right in there. And when you do that, if you want to add color with your marker or anything like that, you, you can. And when we do a grasshopper, it's the exact same thing. So we're going to take our body, we're going to tie loose, and then tight underneath. 
and then we want to make that last piece bigger than the next piece. So we're going to go loose and then tight, then go underneath, and we want this piece smaller than that piece. It'll gradually build up towards the tail. Loose, then tight. Loose, tight. I didn't get that one where I wanted it. Loose, tight, always underneath. Loose, and then tight. Get your thread out of the way. We want to straighten that up on the hook the best that we can. And we're going to take our lighter, same deal. And with the grasshoppers, I like to heat them up a little bit more because I think it looks way more realistic. The dragonfly does as well, but there's a trick to doing it. Um, you can get that little piece too hot and it'll screw you up every time. So just, you know, practice with it the best that you can and it'll you'll eventually get it. So then we're just going to unwrap in the reverse order of how we did it. And the way I do it is I'll sit here and I'll do just a whole bunch of them at one time. And then, you know, I just, I'll have a box of them ready whenever I want. And you can see how much realistic. I got my hand in the way. They look night and day compared to the other ones. You know, it's a very, very realistic body, especially when you do some markering to it. So I hope that little tip helps you. Um, you know, 90% of what we do is to impress fishermen. You know, a lot of the times the, the fish, does it really matter to the fish, you know, and it's like we always talk about how, you know, they see this and we're doing this and then you try to give your dog a pill and they can sniff it out of whatever you've got it in there. So I think animals do have a keen sight and I think the more realistic that we can make something, the creatures are going to have it. Plus it makes our hobby a little bit more fun. So I hope this helps you guys on making your flies when you're using foam a little bit more realistic. So I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.